parents. What does your room look like? When I was a little girl, I didn't even have my own room. I had a bed. Like uh, my bed, was my bed clean? Was my bed orderly? I can start here with this one thing. If you're struggling to make headway, if you're struggling to stay motivated, I would ask you to take a look at your physical environment. What are things that you can do that will actually make you feel like you're more capable of taking on the world? Years ago, I read an article in a magazine that said, you know, what are your three favorite things that make you feel like you're at home? And mine at the time was candles, books, and cozy blankets. And they were like, great, now you know those three things. Now make sure that in your environment, you've got the things that make you feel at home. What I would say to you is, what are the things that make you feel energized? Maybe it's um, your favorite motivational quotes. Maybe it's images of people who inspire you. Maybe it's music. Maybe it's having things in a certain order or having your sneakers set out so that you remember like, oh yeah, I wanna go run tomorrow. Like, Set your house up, not just your mind, not just your body, but set your environment up in a way that sets you up for success. The second thing is the most important. Uh, probably should have done it right at the top, but I wanted to ease you guys in. If you have hung out with me at all on social media, you've heard me talk about this a ton. Your personal environment, meaning your body, your physical health, is the number one most important thing to set yourself up for success to be anything. To be a mama, to be a wife, to be a husband, to be a CEO, to be an entrepreneur, to chase your goals, to, to do the half marathon, to write the book. The number one most important thing is your body and your health. The problem is that so many of us have managed to make it this far without needing to get that in check. In fact, many of us have achieved a lot of our goals and a lot of our dreams by physically abusing our bodies, not taking care of our health. This was a really long road for me. This was a, this was a long journey to get from, you know, 50 pounds overweight, eating fast food every single day, no physical activity, getting, uh, getting winded when I would walk uh, upstairs, my body hurting, my back hurting. I know I know that talking about health, I know that talking about physicality and, and the way that, I know that it's deeply triggering for a lot of people. But I also know that it's a conversation we need to be having. Listen to me. Being in exceptional health is not about the way you look. Being in incredible health is not about how much you weigh or what size you are. Being in incredible health is how you feel. How do you feel? Do you feel good? Is your back hurting? Are you having to take pain pills or ibuprofen? Are you um, stressed out all the time? Are you anxious? Are you fighting depression? Are you like, how do you feel? Do you feel great? Awesome, man, you are doing it. But if you're not, if you're struggling to find the energy, if you're struggling to find the motivation, if you're struggling to find the will, I want to tell you that's where we've got to start. It's incredible to go chase big, audacious dreams for yourself. Y'all know I am one of the biggest dreamers out there, but I would not be where I am if I hadn't gotten healthy physically first. You know, we talk about, if you did last 90 days with us, you know, we talk about five to thrive. I go into a lot of detail about this topic in the new book, but the idea is, what are those things that you can do every single day that will be your touchstone, that will be the place that you always come back to? Are you drinking enough water? Are you getting enough sleep? Are you taking time for gratitude? Are you taking time for self-care? Are you eating foods that make you feel vibrant and alive? Are you eating stuff that makes you feel better in that moment, but 20 minutes later, your body, like you physically feel heavier and it feels harder. And if, you know, you do that, right? I still do that. I still struggle with this. Having a hard week or having a hard day with the kids or something went wrong and I'm like, man, I know if I eat this pizza, I know if I have this thing, that if I know if I eat Doritos, like, oh, it's gonna taste so good in that moment, I'm gonna feel good. And then 20 minutes later, I'm, I'm, I'm going to physically feel ill because that wasn't the best choice for my health. So I just want you to ask yourself, that's a deeper dive and that's something 
we got to talk about that happens in coaching that's like a deeper dive into this subject but for you guys today i have enough time to just ask this question how do you feel is your health great is it on the road to getting better or is that something you struggle with you know the book that i'm writing now next is about health it's about how we're taking care of our bodies and I had the opportunity to speak to a bunch of different women in this community, women of all different health backgrounds. And I ask every single one, you know, tell me about your journey. And almost every single woman that currently says that she's living with bad health, so that she's unhealthy, every single one who identified as struggling with their health also told me, oh, I know exactly what to do. If I wanted to make change, I could, I know exactly what to do. And I would challenge you right now, if that's you, if you're saying to yourself, if you're like, man, I know exactly what to do. I mean, we're right now you're watching this. We're in the first week of a new year and you're probably feeling great because you probably made some commitments on new years and you're like, let's go. I'm going to, I'm going to get it in check. But if you're telling yourself that you know exactly what to do, but it's the same stuff you've always known and you tell yourself that every year during this week and three weeks from now you're gonna be off track, then I would argue with you that you actually don't know all the things to do. Getting in great health, getting to great health or making the steps to get there starts here. It's not, the, it's not about the food you're eating. It's not about knowing the exercise plan. It's about making the decision that your health matters and that you are worth fighting to get to that place. Third thing, community which is based on that old saying i'm sure you guys have heard it you are the combination of the five people that you spend the most time with think about that for a second who are the five people that you spend the most time with a lot of us have friends that we've had forever that's amazing but if you are the smartest person in the room you're in the wrong room you're the most motivated person in the room, you're in the wrong room. If you are the one in your group of friends that's always trying to encourage everybody else to be better, to do better, to grow, who's gonna help you grow? Who's gonna pull you up to the next level? I was at a conference years ago and I heard someone say, proximity is power. Proximity is power, meaning when you are around people who are better than you are, at other things, like the things that you wanna be better at. When you're around people who are better parents than you are, when you're around couples who have a better relationship than you do, when you're around people who are better in business or better at physical health or better at direct sales or better, whatever it is, when you're around people who are better than you a lot, you get better. There's power in that proximity because you're learning. A, you're learning faster. You're learning in real time. You become that person. You start to improve without even knowing it, without even consciously making that choice. Proximity is power and you become who you surround yourself with. If you are struggling with your health, and this is something that you come back to time and time again, what I wanna ask you, friend, with all love in my heart, are you hanging out with a group of people who also struggle with their health? If you're struggling with negativity, look at your environment. Who in your close circle of friends really struggles with being negative? If you're struggling with other people's opinions of you, who are you hanging out with that that's all they talk about? They're constantly talking about what other people think, what other people think. They're feeding your anxiety unintentionally. And, and when people hear this, they're like, well, so I'm just not, I'm just supposed to kick my friends to the curb? Maybe, no, <laughs> no, it's incredible to have those friends who support and love on you if they're healthy choices for you. I'm just saying, make sure you're also seeking out community with people who are excelling. I became better at business when I started hanging out with people who were better in business. And, and so often, because I remember, like, I used to go to conferences years ago as this young baby entrepreneur, and people would be like, find a mentor, find a mentor. I'm like, where do you find a mentor? Like, they're not growing on trees. I don't know how to find a mentor. I have been mentored by some of the greatest minds in business, in podcasting, in teaching, in coaching, and they don't know I exist. I read books. I listen to podcasts. I watch YouTube videos. I Googled everything. 
People talk all the time about being self-made. I'm not self-made. So many people helped me get here, but I am self-taught. I taught myself every single thing that I know about how to be a woman, about how to run a marathon, about how to run a business, about how to grow your revenue. I just did research. This drives me absolutely insane when people are like, oh, I want this, I want that, I wanna grow my revenue, I wanna get into this, I wanna improve my health, but I don't know how. Dude, every single thing you wanna know how to do exists on the internet right now for free. <laughs> and in an age of this much free information, your ignorance is a choice. If you wanna know how to do something and you don't know how to do it yet, that's a choice that you're making because I promise you there are books at your local library for free. You have access to the internet. If you could afford to come to this movie right now, that means that there you have some money to get yourself to the library to do some research. If you don't have inspiring, audacious, incredible people in your community, find them online, find them on YouTube, find them in the pages of books. We have this wealth of history and too many people who are sitting around going like, yeah, I'd like some cooler friends or I'd like a mentor, but I don't have access. Bull crap. You, it's not that you don't have access. You don't have the motivation to go find it. Stop making excuses. You want to be better. You got to do better. And that starts right now today with you making the decision that you are not going to let your lack of access lead to your lack of getting where you want to be. Number four, morning routine. That seems maybe a little odd because the other things on this list tend to be big, sweeping, general, high level things. It, we're all about setting ourselves up for success. And so oftentimes we think, how can I set myself up over the course of my whole life? That's incredible. But at the same time, <coughs> today is what matters right now is what matters and if you are not starting your day strong I don't think that you are productive in your day if you're not productive in your day then you get to the end of the day then you're feeling discouraged and it becomes this sort of cycle of oh I wish I had done more and then I'm staying up late and now I can't get up early and all of these things are happening so one of the things that has made the biggest difference in my life was when I changed my morning routine when I was very very intentional with how I started my day. And in fact, I've had the opportunity since Girl Wash Your Face has become so crazy, I've had the opportunity to become friends with a lot of people like the leaders in the personal development space, like the, the most high performing people that you see on your social media feeds. And what I can tell you unequivocally, I hope that's a real word that I just used, <laughs> but what I can tell you for sure is that all of them have a morning routine. They have a morning routine and it's sacrosanct. They are bananas crazy about starting every single day the same way. So what I would say to you is, is your morning routine setting up your day for success? You know, if you follow me on Instagram, you can see, most people will see how I set up my morning because I'll put it on, but I still get so many questions from the community What's in your green smoothie? What time do you wake up? When do you go to the gym? You know, when do you pray? When, like all of these things. It's such a popular topic and I've gotten so many questions about it that I, I made that the video course that you get for free when you pre-order Girl Stop Apologizing, which y'all are my group, right? So I assume you've already pre-ordered it, comes out in March. Just make sure if you have and you wanna take a deeper dive into how I keep my energy up, when I go to sleep, what am I eating throughout the day, that you have gone to girlstopapologizing.com, put your email, you'll automatically get the video course from us. It's just my gift to you for doing a pre-order because we super appreciate your pre-orders. So make sure you have a morning routine. And if you don't, feel free to go watch our video and get some ideas for how you can build your own. Number five is one of the most important habits. It's such a hot topic. There's so many incredible books about it because most of the decisions you're making in a given day are not conscious decisions. They're things that you've done so many times that you don't think about it anymore. That's incredible when they're good things. It's, it's awesome when your habit is going to the gym. It's awesome when your habit is brushing your teeth or washing your face. That was the worst thing I've ever done, but I felt like I needed to blink because that's the name of the book. Those are the good habits that we love. 
where we get thrown off is when we have bad habits, when we're emotionally eating, when we're not getting enough sleep, when we're drinking too much, when we're getting angry, when we're, those are bad choices that aren't actually choices. We just sort of go through the motions. We're like a snowball rolling down a hill. We kind of can't help ourselves. If you want to set yourself up for success, you need to take a really good look at what are the habits in my life that I'm, that I'm crushing it at? What are the habits that I do every day that are really good for me? And then what are the habits that I'm doing every day that are hurting me? What are the things that I need to take a deeper look at to make sure that I'm not sabotaging myself before I've made any real progress? I love the book, The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. And in that book, he talks about a habit is three things. One, a habit is a cue, a trigger. Something happens in your life that triggers you to take an action. That action gives you a reward every single time. Cue, action, reward. So for me, it could be, I'm gonna get in my car in the morning to drive to work, that's a cue. The action that I always take when I drive to work is pulling into my favorite local Starbucks. The reward is I get my Americano, I feel happy, I've got my holiday cup, life is good, I carry on my way. You cannot change the trigger. You can't change the cue. And that's where people get thrown off in habits. They go, man, I have a bad habit. Every time I get stressed, I have too much to drink. The reward is I feel good for a little while, then I feel crappy. That usually triggers the, here it is, Jeffrey. Jeffrey, yeah, we let him in. Jeffrey's one of my <laughs> negative triggers. You can't change the trigger. You can't change the cue. You can't change the stress in your life. You can't change that things are gonna pop up. What you can change is that middle section. You can change the activity. So it could be, I get stressed and instead of drinking, I'm gonna go on a run. I get stressed and instead of drinking, I'm gonna blast Beyonce and dance it out. I get stressed and instead of drinking, I'm gonna make out with my husband. The reward is really great in that instance. This is PG, that's probably inappropriate. Anyway, <laughs> the idea is that you can't change what life's gonna throw at you, but you can change. You can change how you react to it. And if you do that enough times, it becomes your habit. It becomes the place that you're sort of settling back into. If you want to have success, if you want to set yourself up for the future best version of you, you need to take a look at your habits. You need to take a look at your community. You need to ask yourself how you're starting your day. You need to ask yourself how you're setting up your physical environment and how you're taking care of your body. Because dude, you're worth wanting something more. You are worth the time. You're worth the effort. I know so many of you are giving all of your energy and all of your love into other people. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful to show up for others in that way. But you are not gonna have anything left for yourself. Those of you who come up to me at book signings where you tell me like you're fried, you tell me you're on edge, you tell me that you've lost yourself. You lost yourself because of gay yourself away. You didn't take any time or intention in setting yourself up for success before you tried to achieve it for everybody else. So start there. It is a new year. It's a new year and that means you can be whoever and whatever you want to be. You have got to set yourself up intentionally and that means this week I'm going to challenge you this week to set aside some time and dig into these five things. Where are you killing it? Where could you use some room for improvement? And what are the steps that you're gonna to take to get there? Thank you guys so much for your time. Thank you for sticking around and thinking that my lesson was worth it. And make sure you take your trash with you because the people who leave their popcorn boxes in a movie theater are rude. <laughs> Here we go! You guys, I am so excited to announce for the first time ever our coaching series. I feel like it needs more of a like, Jack, can you add like explosions and like drum, a drum line and like confetti falling from Tiger. Like add the special effects so they know that it's a really big deal for the first time ever. I'm doing coaching, monthly coaching. I've had the incredible opportunity over the last year to get to travel all around the world and speak to women. And the question I get most often is, do you ever do one-on-one? -on -one? 
language, do one-on-one -on -one coaching, do you ever take on clients? I'm like, no. Oh my gosh, I have four children. I have not shaved my legs in three weeks. I do not have time to start coaching people one-on-one, -on -one. but I did really take that to heart because I get it. I know what it's like to look out over this landscape of personal development and want to make change, want to grow your business or want to grow yourself, but not really see someone who's teaching in the way that you like to learn. So if you like my teaching style and you want to learn from me, this is our answer for you. So originally I thought that I would just do business coaching because I have been an entrepreneur since I was 21 years old, 14 years of entrepreneurship. First as a little baby wedding planner, then a big corporate event planner, then as a media business, now to where I am today. And I had to learn over time, how do you find clients? How do you build a portfolio? How do you grow your revenue? Should you spend money on ads? Should you spend money on marketing? Like all of these questions that I had back in the day, that now I've had enough time and wisdom and grown enough, I thought it would be so cool to be a business coach and to really advise, especially those of you who have a side hustle, who are doing MLMs or direct sales or um, try to grow your photography business or your bakery or you really want to scale, that is what I know how to do. But then I was like, well dang, there's a lot of you who we hang out with online who aren't in business, who are stay at home mamas or women in college or in the workforce and you really want to grow your health, you want to grow your relationship, you want to grow your outlook and your attitude. So we've decided to do two separate coaching series. And when I say we, I'm speaking weirdly in three person because it's just me. One day a month, two hours live coaching with me for your life or your business, or if you're super hardcore, let's go ahead and do both at the same time. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be a deeper dive into the things that I know and I have learned over time. It is a direct answer to a question that I've gotten from you guys. So I feel really excited that I will be able to add value to your lives and your businesses. You know, I've talked a lot about the idea that I have some of the best mentors in the world and they have no idea I exist. For so long, I would go to these conferences and people would be like, find a mentor, find a mentor. I'm like, where? They don't grow on trees. Like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. I don't know. And then I realized you don't have to have a one-on-one. -on -one. You don't have to know someone in real life to learn from them and be coached by them. I found mentors in the pages of books by watching YouTube videos, by listening to podcasts. In my day, when I was coming up, there wasn't anything like this where, you know, hey, once a month I could set this day in my calendar and I could show up with someone that I like to learn from and I could talk, I could literally live, ask them questions and we can learn about different topics that would help me become who I wanted to become. I think it's so rad that we have this technology at our fingertips. I am so excited to hang out with you guys each month. I believe that there is such incredible power when a group of like-minded people come together and none of us look alike or act alike or believe or think or vote or love, it's all sorts of different people, but the commonality we have is the desire to become a better version of ourselves. Not a better version of her or him, not like your sister-in-law, not like your boss, but a better version of you. And that starts with you taking ownership of your life. That starts with you being intentional about how you're gonna get from here to there. So I hope if you're interested, you will come along on this journey with me and learn how I got from there to here. You can click the button below and find out more about life coaching and business coaching with your power range. That's all. That's all I got. I wrote. Oh my